Now it's important to understand here that a roof and the insulation or the sarking under a roof, they serve two different purposes. One is to keep water out and the other one is mainly for insulation or as an anti-condensation layer. Now there's a reason why a building blanket when it's installed has to be done correctly and the main reason is to prevent water from getting onto the building blanket because building blanket is an extremely efficient material for sucking water in. Uh, it loves capillary action. So if a building blanket sticks out beyond the roof, anywhere at all, especially at the gutter, it's going to draw water in and you're going to have a leak. So there's a reason why the code says that you cannot droop building blanket into the gutter because it will suck the water back in. So the building blanket has to be cut short of the gutter so when the water dribbles over the edge of the sheet it doesn't get onto the building blanket and as a result the building blanket will suck the water into the roof. Now there are also other times where the building blanket can inadvertently cause a problem. When you install roof sheets, you have a building blanket down, then you put a sheet over the top. And sometimes inadvertently you would flick a little bit of that insulation onto the edge of the sheet on the underlap. And if you don't take that little bit of insulation out and you lay the next roof on top of it, you trap that little bit of insulation on the lap. And where you've got insulation trapped on the lap, that's where water gets sucked in because the insulation will suck the water in onto the lap and that can cause a water leak. We've had a couple of rules where we've tried a good many times to figure out why there's a leak. And eventually when we lifted the roof off, we found insulation right on the lap. And that little bit of insulation caused a lot of trouble. Capillary action problems also affect tile roofs and it's mainly at the valleys and there's a reason why the code says that the sarking cannot be left on top of the edge of the valley and be left in the position where water can get onto the sarking whether on top of the sarking or under the sarking because what will happen on the valley is that you've got the valley and then you've got the sarking that sits over the top and water can actually get under the sarking and pull itself up over the edge of the valley and go into the roof. So there's a reason why under the tiling code you've got to install the sarking away from the edge of the valley. So we've looked at all these different ways that capillary action is causing problems on roofs and if you don't understand how it works, then potentially most roof installers will get themselves into trouble. So if you understand the basics, how capillary action works, then you can take the right steps to prevent capillary action and you will have a dry roof.